Just minutes ago, we noticed that an arson dog ran around back, and that's where investigators believe that fire started. And we talked to a neighbor earlier that lives behind this home, and she says when she saw the flames this morning, the first thing that came to mind was her neighbor's safety. Katie and Neil, we are on Hillsborough Street in downtown Raleigh, a busy time for a lot of people getting off of work. But behind me, you see students, concerned parents here in the area marching to the state capitol. We've been marching with them for about a few blocks now, a little under a mile away. Uh, from the state capitol. I'm just going to let you listen in to what the students are chanting right now. Thieves are going underneath the car and using a power saw to cut out the catalytic converter. We are roughly about a football field length away from where crews are still working to put out those flames. When we first got here at 7 o'clock from where I'm standing, you could still feel that heat. That has since died down. And this happened in the middle of the day while a lot of students were here in class. Yeah, that's right, Natalie. Hundreds of students got up early this morning, volunteering in different parts of the triad. Roads still blocked off. We're a little bit further up from where we were in that neighborhood. Behind me, uh, credit to our photojournalist, Jeff Kildoff. He, he pointed out these are multiple trees down in this driveway. I did some digging and found out that three pharmacies in our area have been robbed at gunpoint in the past month. According to the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, in 2016 alone, more than 800 pharmacies were robbed. Nick Sturdivant live this morning in Chapel Hill. Nick, are people still on Franklin Street? You know what? One, th one thing I've learned since I've been here this morning, no one goes to sleep, especially after a big victory like this. We're outside of the Waffle House here on Franklin Street. At one point, a four hour wait for food. That line stretches all the way down Franklin Street. You asked me about 545 this morning if I can make a snowball. Well, I'm going to kneel down right now. I think I think I can. You see all this snow? It's not too dry. Is How's it? that? How's Oh, yeah. No, no, it's, it's perfect. How, look, look. That is perfect. Now, Josh is your videographer. You should throw to No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That bus driver will arrive in court this morning. And we, Brad, we could learn more about what happened during the time of that accident. Let's look, the roof caved in right there. Yeah. But then the attic looks on fire right there. I guess the roof just came down that way. This is all that's left. I mean, they're outside 24 7. So it kind of sucks that this happened. Both Summer and Christy Leonard look on as firefighters put out the last bit of flames and clean up from Monday morning's house fire here on Spruce Street. A neighbor sending us this picture. The house on fire. What? It's a flame. Leaving a family of five without a home and unfortunately without their dog. And we were told that the nine-year-old woke up the four adults that were living in the house and got them to move out of the house. So in our aspect, he was the hero because he got out, everybody out of the house and the fire department didn't have to worry about doing the rescue efforts. They could concentrate more on the fire control. That's pretty heroic to be nine and not be freaked out with something this devastating happening. It's a day of both honor and reflection. Whether you fought in a war or did not fight in the war, you were there when your country called. And for that, we all say thank you. First one. A day. I just don't feel comfortable coming around. I went to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. twice. For years, Vietnam veteran Mike Griffin put off. And I, I just couldn't take it. I just, I cried. My younger brother, he died in Cambodia. More than 2,000 names are listed here at the Carolina Field of Honor. And the people got to understand, you know, freedom ain't freedom, you know. You got to, you know, you got to respect you know, what these guys do. Each one significant for Douglas Wing. I go now for kidding you, you know, just. That's just the way it is. If both Mike and Douglas could go back. I would do it again for my country. In Kernisville, Nick Sturdivant. Just can't really forget these lives that we lost, man. Fox 8 News. And even mothers in their minivans are flying down this road. It's a problem Brooke Galvin has been accustomed to seeing lately here on Regents Park Lane in Greensboro. I mean, I'm scared for the kids that walk to 
the school bus from around here. I'm scared to walk my dog. I mean, it's Drivers flying up and down this road from sunup to sundown, which is why. Oh, there's one. Officers have been parked here, cracking down on speeders. I did sell you for speed today, okay? And until we can get some of the new construction, the traffic has to flow somewhere. So essentially it's been forced into some of the surrounding neighborhoods. The nearby construction of the urban loop, along with work on other projects in the city, has forced tens of thousands of drivers oh. through neighborhood streets like this one. And as people use it as a cut through, this electric sign serves as a reminder to watch your speed. Yep, I think the radar sign is definitely working. The neighborhood is up in arms right now. I can't think of a day that goes by when we don't at least get a blow of the horn or a passing wave. A lot of people have been very concerned, so it's great to see them out here. Slow down, get where you need to go safely. And If you drive through the intersection of East Washington and South Church Street in Greensboro, nine times out of 10, You've seen it. Spent a lot of time looking at street art in Mexico and Colombia and came back home and really wanted to find um, a place to work on murals. Vera Weinfeld is the artist behind this, a mural that sits on the side of this empty building in downtown. She came down back in April from New York to work with the Greensboro Mural Project. And so we kind of saw this as people seeing Greensboro as part of their family and wanting it to see to do better and to grow. As the group started working on its own project, allowing people in the city to write tough love letters to Greensboro. A lot of people have a lot to say about Greensboro and love it for many reasons, whether it's the people, it's a great place to raise your kids, the greenery. But a lot of people also were like, there's so many people, there's so many schools. Why aren't people more engaged with their community? Why isn't the city listening to the people more? The letters evolving into this, a tough love mural. People from all over the city kind of come this way. And honestly, it's been a learning experience about a lot of what this city is lacking and what people really need. The mural project says it got a right of way lease from the building's owner to do the mural. However, after months of work, they got news that the mural will be lost forever. There's irreversible damage is what we were told um, to the inside of the building. The owner told the group he plans to knock down this building. It's really, it's really hard to, for me to feel okay about this coming down. While this is a tough reality to a mural dedicated to tough love, the hope is that while it still stands, it can spark more tough conversations. It's like this wall has become like a literal manifestation of that.